If you have been in social media recently, then you've probably seen this trending clip of Joy Spring's podcast episode featuring Will Dasevich. Do you believe a non-believer can go to heaven? A non-believer, as yeah. in someone who doesn't believe in Jesus. Yeah. No. Damn. Yeah. What, what will happen to them? They're going to face judgment and go to hell. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so brutal. This clip gave birth to hundreds of comments and hate reactions against Joy Spring. And I thought it was a great opportunity na pag-usapan natin at kunin natin lahat ng pwede natin matutunan dito sa trending conversation na ito. So here are my four brief reflections on this conversation. Number one is the significance of humility and grace in speaking truth. First of all, personally, I don't think na deserve ni Joy Spring yung mga negative comments that she's been receiving all throughout social media simply because she was just relaying the truth from the Bible. And speaking truth that turns out to be offensive to other people does not necessarily make the truth speaker a bigot. And secondly, I think it's unfair for her to be called a bigot considering that she spoke truth not in a hateful or condemning or self-righteous way. Listen, this is something that I really struggle with. This is honestly something that I really struggle with. Yeah. And I wished, I really honestly wish that there's a different answer to this. That, oh, anybody can go to heaven. Now, adding lines such as these when speaking the truth communicates grace, humility, and empathy. Norman Geisler, a well-known theologian and author, and his son David Geisler, also a well-known author, said this in their book, Conversational Evangelism. While the gospel is offensive, we should continue to find ways to communicate it in the least offensive way possible. So as Christians, it is easy for us to be stuck in this truth barrage and fail to consider whether or not our tone, our attitude is counterproductive or working against our communication of the good news of Jesus Christ. We need to remember that speaking truth does not need to be done in an offensive or insensitive way. Reflection number two is about the impact of conversations. But I'm so curious what people in the comments would say about this clip. If you guys have opinions, reactions, please comment. This is fascinating stuff. Yeah. I like having these dialogues. Yeah. And just having And these... I think it's important. It's healthy. It's you healthy. Know? That this conversation alone sparked many other conversations. There are people commenting in social media. There are people asking questions. There are people talking about Christianity. And siguro tinatanong mo, how is this a good thing? And daming daming negative comments everywhere you go. And at face value, it might sound destructive. Pero kung pag-isipan natin ang gusto, it can also be very constructive. And there are two ways that I think that this could be very constructive and beneficial. The first one is it could spur the non-believer into this genuine truth-seeking mode where they ask questions, they research further, they follow the evidence where it leads. And the second one is it will force or compel us Christians to be prepared. To be prepared for when the time comes when this non-believer is in this genuine truth-seeking mode, we're there to answer their questions and eventually lead them to Christ. And yes, probably there will be those who will still be confused and there will be those who will be uncomfortable during that process. But come to think of it, hindi ito yung worst case. Alam mo ba yung worst case? Silence. The worst case is that no one is talking about our faith and no one is talking about Christianity. At least if you look at it in a positive light, because of this conversation, there will be those who will gain clarity and eventually be led to a fuller knowledge of who Jesus Christ is through the power of the Holy Spirit. So ang main point dito, bilang mga Kristiyano, kailangan natin maging intentional sa pag-start ng conversation. We should talk about Christianity, we should talk about our faith, and we will see how God will move in those conversations. And the third reflection is the power of questions. You should be allowed to ask these questions because how do you develop and get better without asking questions? And if the how do you person, strengthen your beliefs? And if the person that you're talking to actually believes that what they're talking to you about is the truth, then they shouldn't be afraid for you to ask questions. Napansin mo ba na yung isang tanong ni Will not only sparked conversations about our faith, but it also gave an opportunity to someone to share the gospel. And here we see the power of a question. And it's just sad to see that 
not many people are asking questions. Not many Christians in church ask questions. And I think there are three reasons why Christians avoid questions. The first one is we think asking questions means that our faith is weak, which is entirely a lie because asking questions means you're just curious and genuine in your faith journey. The second reason why we avoid questions is because we are not equipped to answer them. Since we don't know the answers, we avoid questions entirely. And the third reason why we avoid questions is that we are worried about what other people will say about our answers. Props to Joy Spring and many others who boldly answer questions without the fear of rejection. So a main takeaway ng point na ito is this. We should not avoid questions, but rather we should be ready to answer each and every one of them. And the fourth reflection point is this. There should always be room for discussion on the nuances of interpretation. Yung response ni Joy Spring caused a stir not only sa mga non-believers, but also sa mga believers with different denominations and different views. And I saw some attack her because they had different interpretations of scripture. So even in Christianity, there are different groups. Uh -huh. So there are like Baptists and Puritans and then Reformers. And it's the sects are just hundreds, if not thousands. Now, there are things that the Bible is clear about. And there are also things that the Bible is not that clear and can be open to different interpretations. For example, in Soteriology, which is about the doctrine of salvation, which is the topic of that, that conversation, there are different views such as universalism or exclusivism or restrictivism or inclusivism and all the isms isms right we're not going to talk about that in this video but the main point is this we have to acknowledge that there is room for a nuanced theological discussion or conversation on certain topics and my point here is this we should always have that attitude of being tentative in what we believe, especially when we're disagreeing with someone else's view. Tentativeness, meaning I hold a certain view, but I am open to let go of that view if I find that that view is wrong. If we have that attitude of being tentative with what we believe, then we will be able to be more charitable, especially if we're talking to somebody with different interpretations, different views, and those from different denominations. So instead of labeling someone as a heretic or a bigot, we need to have a more conversational attitude instead of a combative one because conversations are constructive while arguing with a combative attitude is destructive. So I think final thoughts because of episode na yon, and I watched the entire thing and I think Joy Spring did a really good job in answering the honest questions of Will about uh, God's gender, um, evolution, about marriage or dating, uh, organized religions, etc. And for a 29 minute general friendly fun non-academic discussion i think it was a pretty good dialogue i think joy spring did a really good job in representing the christianity that she held now were there some things that i wish she should have rephrased or, or added sure yeah but again we cannot expect a perfect answer from this very candid and friendly conversation unless of course this was an academic setting where you need to be spot on or nuanced in every word or phrase that you say so overall it was a good episode and i recommend my christian friends and non-christian friends to watch that video speaking about nuance and interpretations and views if you want to learn how to interpret or study your bible properly then subscribe to this channel because i'll be posting bible study tips and many other things about christianity apologetics theology etc like this video like the many other videos that i have in this channel and see you in the next one.